Today in the show, we're going to be talking about how Marvel's Runaways became reunited in Marvel's Runaways Find Your Way Home. Previously on Marvel's Runaways, Nico was feeling super down and alone, but that's when Chase turns up in Gert's parents' time machine with Gert on her deathbed, even though she was supposed to die two years ago. Nico summons a doctor using her magic and with the help of the doctor was able to heal Gert. Gert wakes up and is naturally very confused, as a lot can happen in two years and a lot has happened. Chase and Nico go to the hostel with her and here they finally reveal to Gert that the group is no longer together, which Gert refuses to accept. After being reunited with her dinosaur and seeing Victor's head in a box, the three of them go to see Carolina, who is loving her life in college. Carolina is very shocked to see Gert alive, but after talking for a while, she tells Gert that she wouldn't be joining the group again since she loved her life in college. Gert takes this as Carolina is abandoning them and storms off. Nico and Carolina then talk, and Nico decides that joining Gert is the best offer she has. Her alternate is being alone, so she goes after Gert and is like, okay, let's go and see Molly. We're gonna get the band back together. As Nico, Chase, and Gert begin to drive off, Victor's head begins to wake up. So everyone's getting ready to go and see Molly, but what they don't realize is Victor is fully awake now. He's just pretending to be asleep. Cut to Molly with her grandmother. Her life seems to be normal, but her grandmother is collecting blood from Molly for some reason. Gert, Nico, and Chase turn up. Molly's grandmother knows exactly who they are, and Molly is so happy to see Gert alive. She thanks Nico and Chase for bringing Gert back, and you can just really feel the love Molly has for everyone. And to celebrate, Molly's grandmother offers the group celebratory grilled cheeses, and Nico and Chase accept because free food, but Gert is being a stroppy teenager and doesn't want to accept. Gert really isn't happy to be there, she doesn't accept any of the food, she just really wanted to get Molly and leave, but Nico's like, we weren't ever gonna kidnap Molly, if she's happy here, we're gonna leave her here. This is when Chase pulls out Victor's head and Molly's shocked and he's like, oh no, he he's on standby mode, because apparently Molly never found out that Victor died. Then it's revealed that Molly's grandmother is actually a scientist and begins to talk to Chase about repairing Victor. Meanwhile, Molly wants to show the girls her bedroom. She actually takes Victor out of her grandmother's hands, but as she does so, the grandmother plucks out some of Victor's hair. It's also revealed that Molly's parents actually grew up in this house together. Her father apparently ran away from home when he was very young and Molly's grandmother took him in. When they get to Molly's room, Gert is like, right, so where's your suitcase so you can leave here and we can all be together again? And Molly's like, Gert, I live here now. And Gert is like, yeah, but you don't have to. We can all be together again. And Molly's like, yeah, but I have a family again. This just breaks Gert's heart and she runs off. Nico tries to go after her, but Gert just runs off. Then Nico sees this cat. She sits down and she says to it, you know, I never wanted to be a leader. I just wanted to keep everyone alive. And I wasn't even good at that. Meanwhile, Molly and Victor have a moment alone together. And she's like, hey, Victor, why are you pretending to be dead? And then Victor opens up his eyes for her and she's like so excited to see him. Victor's like, how did you know I was alive? And Molly's like, I saw you rolling your eyes at Chase through your eyelids. They also have like this really cute moment where Molly wants to use Victor as one of those Barbie heads that you can get where they have hair that you can style. Molly's then like, okay, so tell me why are you pretending to be dead? And Victor's like, when everyone else finds out that I'm alive, I'll have to make decisions again, like whether I want to be a runaway again or not. And Molly agrees to keep his secret because obviously that's a big decision to make. Gert and Molly's grandmother get to talking on the other side of the house and Molly's grandmother's like, I actually knew your parents really well. Apparently she knew all of the parents in the Pride really well, but apparently the Pride just cut her out because Molly's grandmother didn't approve of the Pride. She then says, I know you've had it especially hard, Gert. You're the only one in the group without powers. And Gert's like, Chase doesn't have any powers. And then Molly's grandmother's like, of course he does. He's, and then she cuts herself off. To cut a long story short, she says to Gert, you are not a problem. You should never feel like a problem. And this is a big house. Molly loves you, so therefore I love you. You can always stay here. So when it comes time for everyone to leave, Gert announces that she's actually going to stay there. This actually shocks everyone, but Molly especially is worried about this. Turns out that Molly's grandmother only invited Gert to stay because she wants to study her. Because think about it, Gert's parents were from the future, so she's now getting to study the genetics of a time traveler, a dinosaur, and Molly, who she sees as her own creation. A few nights pass and Molly's like, you know, you don't have to stay here if you don't want to. And Gert's like, you know I can leave if you want me to. And Molly's like, no, I want you to be here. Just 
you know, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to be. Gert then explains that everyone else has grown up and so she feels like she doesn't really have a choice but to stay with Molly's grandmother because everyone else is in a different place in their life. And then she says that maybe she needs to be more like Molly, who's more happy-go-lucky and always in a good place. Molly tries to be excited about Gert being there, but she can just tell that Gert isn't herself. She's super depressed. Also, Molly's grandmother is running all of these crazy tests on Gert, and Molly's really not happy about that. So after a few weeks, Molly says to Gert, don't think about what I'm about to tell you. Just accept it. Gert's confused about this whole situation, but she goes along with it because it's Molly and she trusts Molly. And Molly explains that her grandmother experimented on her parents and altered their DNA so they became mutants after they were born. This is also why Molly was born a mutant. And that's also why her parents had the exact same mutant power. And this is also why all the cats in the house have telepathy and the glowing purple eyes. She says to Gert, if the two of them don't run away, her grandmother's gonna change Gert too. And as much as she likes it there, she loves her grandmother, she doesn't wanna see someone who she sees as a sister changed. Then there's this really cute scene where Chase is trying to fix Victor and Victor's like feeling really uncomfortable through this entire thing. He's saying all of this stuff about Victor being evil in the future and dating Gert in the future and he's like damn that means you steal my girlfriend and kill her in an alternate future. Do you even know how messed up that is? He fully thinks that Victor can't hear him. Victor just reaches a breaking point and he's like, oh my God, for goodness sake, will you just shut up already? And Chase is like, you're alive, you're alive. Thanks to me, you're alive. And Victor's like, well, you know what I mean? And Chase is like, I know what it feels like to be God now. Through all of this, Victor is just like, please kill me. Please put me back to sleep. Victor then admits the only reason he's talking now is because someone has to go and save Molly and Gert. Victor did not like Molly's grandmother at all. He picked up on her experiments immediately. He's like, she plucked some of my hairs out of my head. You cannot trust her. You need to go and save them. So Chase goes to get everything, go to pick up Nico and Carolina so they can all go and save their friends. Meanwhile, across town, Carolina's actually gone to Nico's apartment to visit her. It kind of seems like Carolina's come around to the idea of everyone getting back together so she can do college and be with everyone at the same time. But when she finds out that everyone's still separated, she's kind of disappointed. And then Nico goes in to kiss Carolina and Carolina's like, Nico, I have a girlfriend. Why do you always do this? And Nico's like, I don't know. Because if you don't know, Nico actually has a history of kissing members of the Runaways, especially if they're in a relationship already. The awkwardness doesn't have a chance to last that long because then Chase bursts in and he's like, we're gonna go beat up Molly's grandmother. And naturally the girls are both like, what the hell? Meanwhile, Molly and Gert are getting ready to run away. And that's when Molly's grandmother walks in and she's like, I should have known. Nothing good comes from the pride. She's like, I should have learned that you can't control people. Even when you design their DNA by hand, you can't control them. So you know what? I'm just gonna destroy what remains of the pride completely. But that's when the rest of the runaways turn up to save their friends. Chase is like, Molly, your grandmother's evil. We're here to beat her up and save you. And Molly's like, don't beat up my grandmother, she's not evil, and we were running away anyway. Meanwhile, Gert is just impressed that Victor is alive and Chase managed to repair him. And then Molly's grandmother has hordes of cats attack the entire team. The team could easily fight back, but no one really wants to hurt the cats or Molly's grandmother, because at the end of the day, it is Molly's grandmother. One of the cats makes Nico bleed, so her staff is summoned, but then the cats telepathically attack the team, so they can't really fight back at this point. And Molly's like, what the hell, Grandma? She's like, I want to love you, I really do, but you're hurting Gert. And she's like, no, I've never hurt Gert. And she's like, you're hurting her right now. The grandma's like, oh, I wanted to make her special, just like your parents. And Molly's like, Gert was already special. Molly then starts shaking up the cats so they'll let go of the team, and then Nico casts a spell to hurt them out the window. It's then revealed that Molly's grandmother actually cloned Molly's mother and then has Molly's mother walk in looking for Molly. And Molly knows that's not really her mother. She knows it's just a clone. So she turns to Gert and is like, can we go now? The two climb through the window and they begin to hug each other because this is obviously heartbreaking for Molly. The one person she thought she could love and trust turned out to be evil as well, along with her actual parents. 
And this person has also cloned her parents and tried using this clone to guilt her into staying. That is heartbreaking. Back in the room, Molly's grandmother is attacking their team. Carolina really doesn't want to hurt Molly's grandmother. Nico's feeling a bit conflicted about that. The two of them begin to argue on what to do. And that's when Molly's grandmother attacks Nico and Caroline is like, you know what, enough is enough. And we just see the entire house light up in Carolina's colors from the outside. The whole team is just sort of sat outside feeling confused and heartbroken and they eventually decide that they're gonna call the Avengers on Molly's grandmother. It's also implied that Nico's a little bit jealous of Carolina's relationship and then it's revealed that there's one cat remaining, the one good cat, Rufus, who never told on Molly and was always her ally. So the team adopt him and after that all decide to go home and that's how the team became reunited. I just want to throw it out there from now, I was planning on including the part where the team meet Julie Power again, but I feel like this is a really good cutoff point and I really don't want to ruin this cutoff point, so we're going to wait till a few more issues are out of The Runaways and then we're going to be covering the next story. I've really been enjoying this series, I really feel like this is the closest that we've had to Brian K. Vaughan since Brian K. Vaughan left. And I don't think Rainbow Roll is intentionally trying to imitate Brian K. Vaughan. I feel like she just gets these characters and gets the tonality of the Runaways in that it's not a superhero book. It's a drama book where they have superpowers and have to try and find ways to run away from various situations. If you want to read this run of the Runaways for yourself or any other runs of the Runaways, I will have links to mycomicshop.com in the description where you can pick up the comics for yourself. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. So what did you think of this first story arc? Please let me in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, and do all of my social links. Please check out my Patreon if you want to support the show, or I have a PayPal donation link. Seriously, any donations you can give helps the show run. But for now, my name is Faust. This has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.